Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the show on this Friday, the 25th of March, 2022. Thank you for tuning in. Glad to have you guys here. We're going to get started right away on this show, and we're going to open up the charts right here and take a look. We're going to be discussing this article here by Von Greyers, All Hell Will Break Loose for Humanity. Uh, normally, I don't sit and read an article all the way through. You know, uh, normally I just... Uh, do my shows like off the cuff, you know, but this, this article is really good and we're going to get into it in a little bit depth, you know, and talk about it. And it says, we are now at the end of an era of economic and moral decadence. Now you see, this point, moral decadence is very important to understanding why this system is going to collapse the way it's going to collapse. You see, in the 1930s, we had something called the Great Depression. And the system, even though it collapsed, it kind of held together because people had a moral fortitude. The people that lived in the 1930s, they were different than the people that live today. The people that live today, uh, they don't have that moral fortitude. And that's an important point. It says this is a debt-infested world built on false values, fake money, and abysmal leadership. All hell's going to break loose. This is exactly right. This is why you guys need to prepare. You need to start preparing now. Because it's actually starting to break apart. The system's starting to shake and break apart. Wars are breaking out, and that's increasing the speed that this system is breaking down. Uh consequences just ahead the consequences will be fatal for the world there are eras in history which have produced great leaders and thinkers but sadly the current era has produced nothing of that kind you know that's that's another big point is leadership out there has been corrupted around the whole world in every single country and in order to push through their agendas this corrupted leadership, and the agendas are all about making them uh, rich, famous, money, everything that they want. And power is a big one. Uh, what they'll do is they'll create narratives, and they, they control the media, and they'll create these narratives. And sometimes the narratives are so vastly different between one narrative and another narrative that they have the people out here confused as to what is correct information or what is a narrative that we're following. Uh, and this is all goes back to the leadership. And he says here, no great leadership, but only incompetent leaders. Looking at the Western world, the only notable statesman in the last few decades, in my view, is Margaret Thatcher. Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1979 until 1980. But political leaders are, of course, instruments of their time. Sadly, times, as, as in current, do not produce superior men. As Confucius says, the superior man thinks always of virtue, and the common man thinks of comfort. This is a buildup of a massive debt mountain, which has given the Western world a false comfort based on false values. As I have pointed out many times, the United States has increased its debt every year since 1930, with a couple of minor exceptions in the mid-1950s and 1960s. The Clinton surplus in the late 1990s were fake and, in fact, deficits. In history, when there is an undue economic pressure, starting, starting wars is popular and often felt necessary. It is convenient to blame the war for the increasing debts. The gold standard was an excellent method for preventing governments to spend money they didn't have. So, a gold standard. You know, I mean, basically what he's saying here is a gold standard uh, helps to keep them on an even keel, the world on an even keel. But 1971, Nixon just decided for everyone on Earth that we're just going to leave that behind. Well, that's added to the problem, added fuel to the fire. It says here, since money could not be printed at will, deficits then had to be financed by setting debts 
in physical gold. As Nixon in the late 1960s had to meet the United States debts to finance and gold, he decided in 1971 to close the gold window temporarily. And yeah, it was supposed to be temporary, but <laughs> that was way back in 1971, back before probably a lot of people in my audience weren't even born yet. And it still hasn't been changed. It says he clearly did, didn't want to hand all the U.S. gold to the, the Gaul. Over 50 years later, the gold window is still temporarily closed with fatal consequences for the United States and the world. The chart below shows the exponential growth of U.S. debt since 1971. Explosive since 2019. Now, you know what you guys are looking at here with this chart? You see this line here? Swoop line that goes up? You know what you're looking at? You are looking at a uh, a hockey stick, what they call a hockey stick curve. You're looking at the power of an exponential. U.S. federal debt from 1971 till 19. It's going straight up now. It's going to continue to go straight up. But shows when the gold window was closed, and this is when all the trouble began. Creating debts of this magnitude is only possible without the discipline of gold-backed currencies. But as I, have, as I have explained before, the debt explosion is not finished until the fat lady sings, and sadly a lot will happen before she finally sings. Because like most economic eras, this one will finish with a number, number of spectacular events, many of which will, will take place concurrently, in other words, all at the same time. Spectacular events coming all at the same time. And we're moving into that period right now. And what it creates with mankind, it creates tremendous uncertainty. It says, only a few months ago, Powell and Lagarde were singing from the same hymn sheet about transitory inflation. But as these central bank's chiefs have proved consistently, they are always wrong. For years, they are trying to get inflation of 2%, and then all of a sudden, it's approaching 10% and they don't understand what has hit them. They haven't even understood that Keynesianism was dead before it started. You know what Keynesianism is, guys? Uh, Maynard Keynes, you know? He was uh, an economist, and he had a certain theory that you could basically uh, just run society by printing money and making everybody rich by just giving them money and printing as much money as you want. And that you could actually run the world that way. And, uh, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, it really doesn't work that way. It's what they call modern monetary theory, where you just run the world by printing a printing press to keep everybody fat, rich, and happy. It doesn't work. It's kind of like, I've used an illustration of an old farmer. He comes in, you know, and... Uh, he says, uh, Mama, I was just out there and I lifted the cow, and the cow weighs 350 pounds. She says, oh, that's fine. He says, yeah, I only weigh 150 pounds. Now watch me, Mama, I'm going to fly. And he grabs a hold of the, the straps on his boots, and he starts pulling on them really hard. And he says, just a minute, Mama, I know I'm going to fly because the math says I'm going to fly. I only weigh 150 pounds, and I can lift 300 pounds. And he's pulling on those boots doesn't work. That's the way you just can't print your way to uh, prosperity. It just doesn't work either. It says even a monkey would understand that if you print ten tens of trillions of dollars and keep interest rates at zero or negative for years, the end result will be a spectacular inflation. Initially, we saw unprecedented asset inflation in stocks, bonds, and properties, but it was always clear that the exponential increase in money supply would eventually reach consumer prices. A perfect storm means that everything can go wrong will go wrong. And that's not just obvious failures in many parts of the society, but a total unforeseen consequences. Let's just look at some of the obvious events that will take place in the next few years. Stocks have topped worldwide. Stocks the correction currently taking place is likely to end very soon in a devastating decline. Everyone will get slaughtered when all hell breaks loose. 
whether investors buy the dip or just hold on to their stock. They won't understand what hit them. Just look at the charts below. And the major falls starting in 1973, 1987, 1999, 2007, and 2020, they were all nail biters at the time. But today, you can hardly discern many of them on this chart. So these are your major drops off in the market. He's uncircled them in blue. And if you look at the overall, rather than looking at those few drops we've had, overall it's following an exponential. The stock market is. And I don't altogether agree that we're in for a massive crash. If this inflation keeps going, we could be in for exactly the opposite. This exponential could actually continue on its way to infinity, just like the money supply. Because this is often what happens. You get your best performing stock markets in a hyperinflation. But that doesn't mean you're gaining money because the, the currency that the stock market is valued in is losing money faster than the market's going up. So moving on, it says for decades, every correction has recovered and reached new highs, but this time it will be different. Although no one expects it, stocks are likely to decline by 75 to 95% in real terms. And do not recover for years or maybe decades. See, I, this is the part of the article I don't altogether agree with. That we're going to see the 75 to 95% decline in the stock market. For one thing, the stock market is the Fed's Federal Reserve's baby. And they have an unlimited printing press. And I believe that we could actually see the stock market fall out of bed if these bond yields continue to rise like they're doing. But I think at a certain point, I think the Fed's going to step in during that decline. And that's going to push us further toward the hyperinflation and more inflation. And it'll probably correct the stock market and send it going back higher, too. That's what I think could happen. You know, but ultimately, if these bonds keep moving to the bond yields keep rising, which they probably will, uh, and they're rising really fast today. I could see that at a certain point, not too far down the road, starting to break the stock market. And how many of these interest rate hikes will the Fed actually be able to get away with before that happens? And then they have to reverse course because the stock market, their baby, is hadn't had anything, any milk to drink for, for two days and it's crying in the crib and they're going to go in and give it more milk. Of course they are. Because it's their baby. So it says bonds have gone up for 40 years and rates have reached zero or negative. Rates have now turned up and we are likely to see interest rates reach uh, at least the 1980 levels of 15 or 20 percent, probably higher in a hyperinflationary debt collapse. Boy, he's talking about 15 or 20 percent. <laughs> Many bonds will become worthless and more suitable for framing and hanging on the toilet wall as a reminder for future generations. Credit markets will come under the same pressure as bonds, and with defaulting borrowers neither in a position to service the debt nor repay it. Property markets have also reached extremes, fueled by cheap or free money and unlimited credit at very high leverage, and European mortgage rates are around 1%. The, this is negligible. And it's irresponsible financing costs have driven property prices to ridiculously and unsustainable levels. Well, you know, I have a little bit of a disagreement with this too, this part about the property markets completely bursting. Uh, my viewpoint's a little bit different than this article and the fact that I don't see central banks stopping. I, I see them in a pause right now. They're kind of like trying to half-heartedly fight inflation. But ultimately, these are the guys who caused inflation. And ultimately, they're going to go back to what they were doing when they see markets start to crash, like what he's talking about here. And when they do, you know, we're just going to see more of the same. Ultimately, they are in the midst of central banks destroying the fiat currencies 
And who's going to benefit from all that ultimately is, is any avenue or way out of fiat currency. Because everything's priced in fiat right now, guys. Your house, your car, everything. It's all priced in fiat. You say, how, how much is your car worth? Oh, it's worth $10,000 or whatever. How much is your house worth? Oh, $200,000. Yeah, the key word there is dollars. At a certain point, the fiat currencies will cease to function properly because they become so worthless. Then what do you price your house in? Still priced in dollars? Is your car still priced in dollars? If the dollar becomes worthless, well, you're going to have to reprice it in something else, something that does have value. And, I mean, it's hard to see something like this happening, but could there be a time in the future when you say my house is worth one one-hundredth of a Bitcoin? My car is worth one thousandth of a bitcoin <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh today borrowers could afford an increase to three percent never mind 10 20 percent like in the 1970s it says today few borrowers could afford even the three percent never mind the 10 percent or 20 percent like in the 1970s as rates rise it's absolutely certain that the residential and commercial property market bubble will implode leading to major defaults and high vacancy rates and homelessness. Well, you know, you're only going to get so much homelessness out there before the people rebel against the system. And what does that look like? You know, it looks like massive hordes of people. Well, we've already seen this. We know what it looks like. Do you remember uh, back during the COVID crisis when they were uh, running through the streets, throwing bricks through windows and things like that? Well, imagine that on a scale of 100 times larger than the problems that they have during, during the COVID crisis. Imagine 100 times larger with the people revolting. It'll shut everything down. Uh, they've already shown their hand what the people can do. They can shut down highways and stuff. I mean, it's right, happened right here in Canada. How do the trucks get through then? How do they keep the food on your grocery stores then? And so what's the net effect of that, ultimately, is more people revolting in the end because then the grocery stores are all empty. They're all going hungry. And ultimately, in the end, the system starts to shut down. So what does that look like? Mad Max? I mean, I'm being serious, guys. What, what they're saying in this article here, and this is why I've been telling you guys, you got to prepare. Uh, chaos. It says, he's going into here talking about the derivatives. He says, derivatives are a major financial nuclear bomb that is likely to be a death knell for financial markets. Chaos and the triumph of survival. Der global derivatives. Uh, primarily the over-the-counter and most likely the... Uh, uh, two plus quadrillion dollar range. That's how big the derivatives market. Every single financial instrument contains a derivatives element with massive leverage. Due to the current volatility in, common, in commodity markets, most large commodity trading firms as well as hedge funds are now exposed to margin calls. He says, remember that this is just the beginning of the crisis with more bad news unraveling on a daily basis as the derivatives markets blow up. With counterparties failing, central banks will have to print quadrillions worth of worthless dollars, paving the way for massive hyperinflation. Massive hyperinflation he's talking about here. We're, we're talking about the fiat currencies actually going to zero. So what does it matter then if the stock market goes to 100,000? If the currency's on its way to zero. This is why you guys got to think about getting out of the dollar. Because even if you just buy one silver coin, just one silver coin, and imagine all this happens, the financial system becomes, and the dollar becomes worthless and everything, you'll still have that silver coin in your hand. 
at least that see we're always going to have to have a means of exchange and i can kind of see which way this thing is going now at this point we're so deep into it that when the real chaos breaks out in the world it's very likely the power is going to go out but like i said humanity always has to have a means of exchange and now at that point the dollars become worthless and nobody accepts it what are they going to turn to i think they're going to i think they're going to turn to gold and silver and i think it's i think it's going to become so notoriously valuable because there's so much little bit of it out there in the hands of the people to use as a means of exchange that it might come down to a silver coin a whole ounce size silver coin might be just absolutely too much to use as a means of exchange and you might have to go into the garage if you got an ounce of silver and you might quite literally have to put it on a bench vice get a pair of pliers and nibble a little piece off a little piece the size of a uh, a little tiny piece off of your coin and take that in and use that to buy your bag of rice or whatever it might come down to that to where that little tiny piece is what you call a nugget a little tiny nugget and you know if you take a whole silver coin it might be a hundred nuggets in that little tiny silver coin and so you know these guys out there they say well how much silver do i need do i need 500 ounces do i need a thousand ounces do i need ten thousand ounces they're not thinking the right way think about when the time comes when all of the fiat money has become completely worthless in other words went to zero the power's been gone for six months <laughs> so, cell phones don't work your cryptocurrencies are gone the way of the goonie bird because that don't work either and the people out there go food has become money at that point medicine is like worth more than gold especially antibiotics and things like that just one antibiotic pill I mean we're looking at a period in time where human life itself is almost completely valueless but still humanity needs a means of exchange and what's it gonna be probably gold and silver and metals copper doesn't matter what you got metals and food food will be money water fresh water will be money and people people <clears throat> because there's a lot of people out there and they're all of this generation that's unthankful disloyal uh and so on i mean they have grown up in such a soft lifestyle that this system is supported by a a 40 year long pay for it today worry about it tomorrow and uh, in other words they they just go out and borrow the money they need to buy whatever they want for the last 40 years this debt credit cycle is is blossomed as size it is today when that all bursts this whole system human life isn't going to be worth five cents but what is going to be worth a lot i think is gold and silver we're going to all of a sudden just the whole thing's going to implode on itself and i think the whole thing's going to go back to gold and silver because how can you support the the they've already shown you that they can't support the electrical grid properly and now we're going into a a, a crisis energy crisis where they don't have enough coal they don't have enough oil they don't have enough and, and they got problems with the nuclear power plants producing power and, and so on uh, might have uh, there might be a huge question mark about nuclear power and everything else uh, and we're not into this era of, of, of free energy so anyway I'm getting sidetracked from my article here uh, he's going on to talk here i'm gonna to have to surmise some of the stuff because uh, it's just getting too long for my show but because i've been interjecting so many times but anyway uh he goes on to talk about the dollar collapse digital money 
which is where they want to go. They want to take you to the central bank digital currency. He lists it here. And ultimately, where is that going to lead? Is It's about control. But how can they have control if the system starts to disintegrate and they can't keep the power grid? Their control, all these ones that are in power, their control relies upon the, the power grid and the uh, this uh, communications network, telecommunications network that runs on top of the power grid. The power grid goes down, your telecommunications network goes down. All of their control relies upon those two things. <clears throat> That's centralized control. And this is a central bank digital currency. It's a central bank. It's a centralized control of money. It only works if you can keep the power grid going. Which I think is going to be coming to major doubt very soon. Uh, along with all of this, these things I've been talking about, you know, picture a world where gold and silver become money again because it doesn't need the power grid. Food becomes money. Water becomes money. Medicine becomes money. Seeds become money. Uh, spices become money. But, uh, and human life ain't worth hardly anything. You were kind of talking about a semi-Mad Max world. It's kind of like somewhat like Mad Max and the power grid's been down for like six months uh, and telecommunications is basically gone your cell phone you might have the newest latest Apple iPhone but nobody wants it because there's no power to charge the thing or maybe they do want it but they're gonna have to charge it off of us off of solar and they're not gonna be able to connect to a digital network with it maybe it's okay for them to have uh, if they've if they've stored away a few uh, uh, videos and stuff. Maybe they can watch their videos on it. But it's just going to be more or less a novelty uh, with no way of producing more. Basically what I'm telling you guys is in a period in time like that we're in for a massive population decline worldwide. Because the system has been supporting this generation of people out there who have become totally reliant upon the system for everything and when that's gone and there's no services anymore or anything like that no services I mean things like ambulance police service fire service all these kind of things that we've grown to expect including our power everything's delivered to us when all that's gone and the system breaks apart it's going to be a very difficult world to survive in, you know? And uh, basically, I guess what I'm telling you guys is, is the rich guy is a guy that can still eat, still has food. We see how kind of an example, you know, is, uh, oh, I'm not going to use that as an example. Anyway. It says unemployment, the pension system will fail, unemployment will increase dramatically as world trade declines. Human hell breaking loose will sadly be felt by most people on earth as a consequence of the problems outlined above. And that is without a bigger nuclear war, which obviously would be fatal for the world. He says the consequences of food shortage and economic misery combined with the failure of governments to function properly will clearly lead to social unrest in many places, even civil war. And he shows a picture of hell here. You know, uh, a, it looks like a painting. Um, does it say here what painting it is? It's Bruegel, the triumph of survival. That's what the painting's called. Let me see if I can click off of that thing. No, I guess I can't. Uh, Bruegel, the triumphs of survival. And we see all these people going through turmoil, is what I call it. Looks like, looks like terrible stuff going on in that picture. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the current financial and economic crisis was neither caused by COVID nor what happened in Ukraine currently. The current crisis started with the problems on the banking system and repo market in August to September of 2019 and then exacerbated by COVID in early 2020. 
Okay, so it says the origin of the 2019 banking crisis is obvious. It's the debt bonanza since 1971. In other words, they took us off the gold standard. They made it so they could print all the money that they wanted. You know, and it says in the perfect storm, a number of very ugly catalysts will always occur at the worst possible time in order to trigger one worse crisis after the next. Uh, he goes on to talk about the war here. He says, one, no one knows how this war will end. The Western world is very badly informed about the state of war since the media is biased, pro-West, and anti-Putin. But Putin is not likely to give up easily. Therefore, sadly, the war will be, the, the bet, will be at best a local and protracted and at worst lead to consequences, which I won't even speculate at this point. In other words, he's thinking about nuclear war. Uh, well, I'll tell you what I think. He's he's saying that that the media is biased, pro West and anti Putin. Uh, I think the media on all sides, no matter what part of the world you are, the media is like I say, creating a narrative. They create narratives now. Uh, they don't like to come right out and boldface lie but now they're starting to at a certain at a certain point they've got reached a point where uh you have to be very careful about trusting the media but where do you get your news from you know if you can't trust the media you know and they're creating some false narrative uh, and this creates a much difficulty especially for people like me who try to bring you guys what i think is really going on uh, then I get blasted. People say, "Well, you're you're just listening to the false narrative," uh, but you got to get your news from someplace. I mean, I can't be all over the world like a news reporter. Uh, it's it would first off it'd be impossible to travel the world nowadays. It's just they've put so many blockers in for you to try to travel. I mean, you, uh, I mean, if you if you want to go someplace, you know, uh, they say like, "Well, you got to have a COVID test within 24 hours." Do you know how? Uh, I mean, they don't even say, like, it was easier when they said 72 hours. 24 hours, how hard is that? I mean, your thing expires in, in just a few hours. It's like you get a test, and then you're like, I got to hurry and get the results real right, right now because I got to get the plane, and, and if I don't get these results, uh, I ain't going to be able to make my flight and all this kind of stuff. Imagine trying to travel around the world right now, running into that in every country you went into. Each country's got a different set of rules. You can't travel the world anymore. It'd drive you nuts. You'd go bonkers crazy before you'd be on your third flight to try to move from one place to another. Because each country's got a different set of rules and they update the rules daily practically. You know? It's an absolute nightmare that they've created. Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh... But this is the way with bureaucracy all over the world right now. And this is why we're going into this period. It, ultimately, where they're headed and what they're going to end up doing to all of us is, is starting in 1971, they start, to, they start to pick away at the system. Nixon and his ice pick got up there in the system with like a huge block of ice. And he started picking away at it. And he didn't have much success because it's a big, beautiful block of ice. But you get more of these politicians coming along and each one doing their own little job of picking away at the block of ice. And ultimately, we're to the point now where the whole thing's just going to collapse in a big heap of ice fragments and start to melt. Because each one of them's done a little part in tearing down this edifice that was the system. I can't help but think about an illustration that comes from the Bible about an iron, a statue that was like made out of... Uh, the feet of the statue were iron mixed with clay. And uh, the thing broke apart real easy and fell. And the reason why was because the iron mixed with clay didn't have enough strength in it to hold the rest of the statue up. Because it was like it weakened it. The iron mixed with clay. And uh, it's a good illustration for the way this system is put together. Uh, and you get these politicians that's only out for their own gain. Uh, they want, they all want the same thing. They all want to be rich, famous, 
power, money, you know, and they don't give a flying rats behind about any of us or what happens to us. So we put our faith in them to run this system. And our faith is blind obedience to them. And they're 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 taking advantage of our good uh, faith in them. We're always looking to them as an external source to solve our problems. And they're just out for themselves. Humanity has to solve its own problems itself. Instead of looking to an external source. Basically, it's like in the old days, you know, a guy used to have a wagon going down the road, you know, and he had reins. They controlled the horses. Well, what we've done is, is as a collective humanity, we've let go of the reins. Now the horse is heading toward the cliff. The reins is, these. it's like the political structure. It's a runaway horse. What you need to do is you need to grab those reins and pull back on those reins really hard. And that's what the people, the people have to do that. Otherwise, we're all going to end up going over the cliff. Going over Niagara Falls in a barrel is what's going to happen to all of us, every one of us. And we're all going to end up not being here any longer on this planet. Unless we all wake up together at the same time and say, hey, you know, we got to grab these reins and we got to pull really hard or the horse is going to go over the cliff. You know, and as we get closer and closer to this problem, it's going to be harder and harder to haul the reins in. Uh, he got a chart here. It says gold price adjusted for U.S. monetary supply since 1934. And it says gold is now at the same level it was in 1970 as far as compared to the monetary supply. So that means it's a really good buy right now. Uh, inflation and hyperinflation are likely to, to destroy most asset values in coming years and currencies. We'll make that final move to zero. Basically, he's saying here that gold is your really... Gold and silver. In my estimation, guys, I think gold's a bit of overkill. I think silver's the perfect thing. I think silver's going to prove to be your salvation. That... And food and water that you, and medicine that you put away for yourself. And then a way to protect that from other people taking it away from you. You got to think about that too. You know. And if you do everything just right, you might come through to the other side of this crisis. Where the world is going to rearrange itself and all the rules are going to be changed. Uh, on the other side of this crisis and these it's basically this crisis is going to purge the system of all the malfeasance all of the corruption all of the uh, pol politicians who are all on the take for their own gain all of them around the world I'm not going to isolate any one politician or world leader and say he's bad and the other ones are good I'm not going to do that because they're all bad every damn one of them and they fool you by this left-right thing. Uh, four years of people will go to the left, you know. And then they get dissatisfied because the politicians aren't doing a good, good job. And then they start looking to the right again for an answer or a solution. Left and right's both corrupt. You guys need to understand that. You need to understand it and start understanding it real well right now. It's the people out there. The people. They are the ones who are not corrupt. I mean, okay, they've been spoiled because we've been through a 40-year debt binge that's coming to an end. And the people that think they're not spoiled, they are. Everybody, every single person out there has been spoiled by the system. It spoiled you. You get whatever you want whenever you want it. You want lobster today? Oh, we want lobster today. Let's go ahead and get a lobster. You can go ahead and get a lobster. 
Well, you know, the spoiling's going to end, but you got to make it through the conclusion of this system and into this new system that's coming in. It's coming in fast. You got to be quick on your feet. In order to survive this thing, you got to be the chameleon. Basically, what that means is, is the chameleon survives because he's on the grass, down on the ground, and the birds are flying overhead. And they can't see him because he's green, and the grass is green. They fly right over him, and he's sitting there looking up at them. Hi, birds. <laughs> Hi, birds. His eye, big eyes, you know, chameleons got big, big round eyes, you know. And he's green. So then he runs up on the branch. Suddenly, he's out of place. And now the birds can see him. Because he's still green, the branch is brown. What does he do? He very quickly changes to the color brown of the limb of the tree he's on. And now they can't see him again. He changes color. And that's what everyone out there that's going to survive this thing has got to be the chameleon. You've got to change color. In other words, what you've been used to all this time with... The world functioning a certain way that you're used to, you know, uh, everybody's out there chasing the dollar, you know, and trying to make some money, what they call money, which isn't really money. All that's going to come to a conclusion, and your way of life is going to come to a conclusion, and a new way of life is going to come about. you got to be able to change to that new way of life, like the chameleon. And you got to be able to do it fast and fluently in order to survive. The change is occurring right now. And it's going to get a lot faster. Basically what this article has been about in the next year or two. And what I'm telling you guys, you don't have a long time to prepare for this. Prepare yourself mentally. And what the challenge I'm giving you guys right now is to start preparing yourself mentally. I'm having to do the same thing. Same thing I'm telling you guys to do, I'm having to do it. And it's not easy. It's very hard. But you got to do it and you got to do it now. You got to start preparing yourself. That this is going to get really hard. Because when the system collapses, there's going to be a transition period that's going to be like hell. And the more you're able to adapt, the more you're going to make it through this transition period and not be a casualty of it. you got to start adapting now. So, this whole article that I've went through with you guys, it's been a long one. I never hardly do a show this long, 42 minutes long. But this is a serious situation we're in. If you look at this picture right here, you'll see that it's basically depicting uh, the triumph of survival. But there's an awful lot of people laying there, and they ain't moving in the picture. I guess those are the ones that didn't make it, you know? And it's not necessarily about human strength that's going to get you through. Some of the strongest, you got these people out there uh, who take gym every afternoon. They run 30 miles and all this kind of crap. They might not make it through the first day because of their attitude and just being plain stupid. When, when the, the crisis comes and there might be a whole bunch of people out there in the street uh, doing their thing, throwing bricks and screaming and yelling, and they might be right in there with those bunch of people and, 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 and not make it because they just weren't smart. So it's going to be a combination, not just physical strength. You might have to have some physical strength, but it's also using your brain is even more important. Staying away from trouble. When you see the, a, a riot start someplace or whatever, and it's just massive bunches of people screaming and yelling and hollering and all this going on, a lot, of, a lot of people say, hey, that looks exciting. Let's go over there and see what's happening. Bonk, they get it. That's it for them. Because they got right into the trouble. The I mean, old saying my mama taught me, never trouble trouble till trouble troubles you. Never trouble trouble until trouble troubles you. Don't go looking for trouble. If you see trouble, run the other way.
as fast as you can, your legs will allow, allow you. Uh, try to hide yourself away from the trouble. That's the best way to avoid it. And that's part of the whole concept of being the chameleon. The chameleon doesn't, uh, once he's up on the branch and he's turned brown, you know, he doesn't run back down under the green thing real quick and look up at the birds and say, Here I am! Eat me! That'd be just plain stupid, you know? Anyway, listen, guys. Thank you for listening to my show. I know this has been a long one. <laughs> Probably the longest show I've ever produced. 42 minutes, 45 minutes. Unbelievable. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.